Hi everyone, Trisha here on 4x4 Canada Podcast. Thank you for joining us today. I had the opportunity to go to Overlanded North in Alpine Hills right here in Caledon, Ontario. Let's talk about Overlanded North a little bit. The mission of Overlanded North is to be a resource for Overlanders in Canada by bringing seasoned and new Overlanders together. It's either by social media or doing their annual events such as these. They focus on creating a community and this community of like-minded people, of adventurers, explorers, building relationships, exploring and learning through their clinics. And of course, having fun doing it. They also have a warning that this hobby becomes a passion that can take you anywhere. Let's go check it out. As I walked through the grounds of Overlanded North, the amount of awesome rigs is mind blowing. And the gear and the equipment that they have. This community is definitely awesome. Let's check it out. Yeah. 
everyone. We are currently driving to the driver experience today here at Overland at that Albion Hills. We are the first group to go today, so this will be pretty exciting. There's a few different rigs in our group. We have some Jeeps, some Rams, some Tacomas, so it's going to be fun and stay tuned. So this year they had something new to offer, which is a new event called the Driver's Experience. It's hosted by Chris and Richard from Overland Training Canada. And basically it was three hours of training, of off-roading, off-road recovery, and just looking at different rigs and race capability. I had fun time during the course. I went through, you know, some obstacles, some mud, and of course the rock pile, which is totally awesome. Another part of the experience was hitting the tea totter with TFT Burlington. We got on and felt weightless for a few seconds. Do it. Say it again. I'm going to save my duckies because they're all going to fall. <laughs> okay, passenger a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Hard break. Okay, slowly, a little bit passenger. Yeah, keep going. Okay, there's your front. Good job. Good job. Proud of you. We're here with Red Bear Outdoors, a Canadian company located here in Toronto. Their motto is to get you outdoors. They come with tents, racks, campers, and awnings. Let's go check it out. Hi everyone, welcome. We're here with Red Bear Outdoors, and here today we're with myself, Trisha, and Mike. Hey everyone. So today we're just going to do a little walk around and just talk about Red Bear Outdoors and about their products and what they're specialized in. So today, Mike, you want to tell us a little bit about your rigs? Yeah. You want to do a little walk around and just tell us what you have? <laughs> yeah, for sure. Right right up here we've got the, uh, well, this is the original Red Bear, so to say. It's partially where the name came from. So this is our Canyon, uh, 2016 Canyon, and we've got it outfitted with a Alu Cab. Uh, canopy camper. Mm. Uh, on the inside of the canopy camper itself, we have our own custom electrical systems, uh, which is you know a service that we do. We do full electrical service for everybody, whether it's solar, dual batteries, anything you need. Um, we've got a prototype of a cabinetry unit that we're actually building out right now. So that's going to be evolving into um, a more uh, developed line over the next few months that we'll be, you know, looking to sell to provide to our customers. Mm. Uh, it's got a whole ton of accessories from Alucab itself as well. Um, this truck also has, uh, we've got the Strands light bar on the front. We've mm. got uh, Strands fog lights, which will be a little hard to see right now. Uh, Warren Zeon winch, um, all of these items that we are able to provide to customers uh, of Red Bear Outdoors. Awesome. So let's talk a little bit about Red Bear. Uh, Red Bear. When did you guys start? When did you guys start coming? So we started off in July of 2017, mm -hmm. um, and originally we were the first to bring in Kapui tents, which were the one of the let's call them initial soft shell tents that were really big in the market in North America at the time. Uh, they eventually got bought out by Truly, so nice big brand, right? Uh, and um, Ever since then, we've been carrying Tuli as well, of course. Um, and so we originally started in 2017 of July. We brought in the Tapui tents. Uh, we used to sell, honestly, we ran an online business pretty much and would go to see people that uh, that were interested in seeing a rooftop tent. And we'd meet them at a parking lot and open up a tent and show them exactly how it works. You know? And that you know that worked as a as a long time passion project essentially mm -hmm. um and then over the years we just started building and picking up more different brands to, um more different services and pretty much everything that we sell we use ourselves mm -hmm. we try it out we make sure it works mm -hmm. um that's why all the brands that we carry are usually on the higher end but mm -hmm. they're also high quality they're going to last you a long time and they're going to get you wherever you want to go that's amazing so now, I guess picking up for the last few years, now we're seeing a lot more overlanding. Yeah. Overlanding is such a big thing now. It's getting more into, you know, leaving the Jeeps. But 
Tacomas and yes. the Land Rovers and even the Lexuses yeah. are getting into it. So what is you think, the, um, like what's your top selling product that you would say? Is it like a tent? Or is it accessories that people like to see or get to use? I think it comes down to a bit of a split. Mm -hmm. So there's the split of putting the traditional style of camping because we sell also tents. And those are the ground, uh, really quick pop-up setup tent. Um, those will be the number one seller in that category. Mm -hmm. uh, and then once you get into the rooftop tents and campers and so on, mm -hmm. uh, at the moment it's iCamper, uh, Alicab is picking up. The brand is starting to become more recognized within Canada, so it's uh, it's gaining ground. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think by next year it'll very likely overtake okay. as well. So soft shell or hard shell? What is what's the difference between that? Is it the weight? Is it distribution? Is it the amount of people that fits? Like mm -hmm. how is the difference? As a very newbie person <laughs> to tenting life, um, yeah. how does that work or how does that go? Uh, very valid question. A lot of people. First thing that they try to find mm. out is like, what's the difference? Which mm. one do I actually want to go with? Mm. Uh, we ended up actually writing a couple of little blog articles on our website just for that reason. But basically the soft shell versus hard shell uh, comes down to a couple of things. One of the first things that people will look at is the budget, mm. right? So soft shells will be cheaper than the hard shells. Um, on the flip side though, is the convenience of use. So a mm. soft shell will, your tear down process, like your, your pack up process will yeah. probably take you 10 to 15 minutes, okay. right? Uh, because there's a lot more work of having to move around the tent, right. having to fold things in half, having to stuff fabric, mm. all, all this is happening above your height level usually, right? right? right, right. Uh, versus with a hard shell, uh, if you have something like our eye campers, for example, the eye campers are the clamshell design, so everything kind of gets sucked together with a couple of straps mm. and then you literally close it so you can be done in about two minutes. Okay. And then you have something like the alu cabs, which are the wedge style tents. Okay. So with the alu cabs, I mean, you're, you're talking seconds to close this thing, wow. right? You literally pull down one strap. Uh, you might have to buff it in the fabric just a little bit, yeah. but then it's closed, latch, latch, you're done and ready wow. to go. So wow. that's really where the convenience factor comes in. And that's usually where you're paying a little bit of extra price for. Um, in terms of other factors, you're looking at uh hard shells you'll be able to well especially with the aluminum ones mm. for example there we have crossbars mm. you'll be able to mount things on the roof right mm. with uh a soft shell you kind of lose that capability okay. because now you have a fabric that is sitting on the roof of your vehicle now you can okay. still strap a canoe to it right. but not really putting anything on, the on top, itself. On top. okay yeah. and something interesting that i noticed i went on your website and i was looking at your rent tent program can you tell us yeah. a little bit about that yeah, so we try to rent the majority of the most common items that we sell. Um, so that includes the gazebo, uh, sorry, gazelle ground tents and gazebos. Mm -hmm. uh, that also includes the rooftop tents. So mm -hmm. we rent the soft shells. We rent uh, the eye camper uh, mini, which will be more fitting to uh, something like a Wrangler, for example, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, or a smaller vehicle like a Subaru uh, Outback, mm -hmm. uh, where you know weight is a concern essentially, mm -hmm. right, for the roof. Um, we also rent out the full alu cabs. We rent out the full size eye campers uh, and a bunch of other accessories too. So if you want to try out a fridge or a jackery power source mm -hmm. um, or you're missing a solar panel for a weekend, mm -hmm. we can rent all those things. Wow, out. that's so. awesome. So you guys need to go on the website, check it out because yes, that please. is an awesome opportunity. If you are brand new, you know, get it, just getting into overland getting into camping and exploring, that's definitely like a great option to check out Red Bear Outdoors. Thank you very much. And last question. Yeah. What do you guys have planned for 2024? Anything coming new or exciting or something that you could give it a bit? Uh, <laughs> keep, keep growing the business, you know, keep growing, making us bigger, uh, mm. trying to get out to more shows, have more awareness of the brand itself, mm -hmm. but also different brands that we carry. Mm. But we're also trying to evolve our services further. So the, one of the main things is working on our uh, inventory. Okay. Right? So it's something that we want to offer to customers, whether they have an alu cab because we produce, we, outfit so many alu cabs mm. one of the main things people ask for is can you build me the interior mm. so we're trying to build out we've partnered with two very great carpenters uh to actually go through the process and okay. prototype out a build which will then convert to a sellable unit um and then beyond that uh you know we'll see we've got see? we've got many many plans that's uh good. that's good. You know, we'll see where the economy takes us and where can people can find you guys connect with you or find you on social media yeah uh pretty much Anything you name it, we've got it. So redbearoutdoors.ca is the website. Uh, Red Bear Outdoors on Instagram, on Facebook. Um, you can text us if you want on one of the phone numbers that are on Google or on our website. Uh, give us a shout. 
Uh, honestly, one of the best things is probably just send us an email to info at redbaroutdoors.ca. Awesome. And of course, we have our showroom in Toronto uh, at uh, 55 McCormack Street, which is at Keelan St. Clair. Great. Thank you. Awesome. Strike Force 67 is a Canadian company operating right here in Sarnia, Ontario. They're associated with companies that offer innovative and practical quality products. Their mission is to offer these products to Canadians. They also give back to the community as they are a proud supporter of the Wounded Warriors Canada. All right, so we're going to talk about the Go Treads. Yeah, let's just get this out of the way here. So Go Treads. Yes. Go Treads, uh, it's a traction tool, but a lot of people uh, get more mileage out of them as a uh, leveling tool. You got a rooftop tent, so you can... Wow. Right? And actually the proper way to do this, when you're going to use them for leveling, now you got this little rampy thing, come right up, boom. Every plate is an inch thick, so here in this you to use and abuse them anything happens you just get a hold of us and we'll send you the components we want to see pics so we can send that back to engineering okay right and um, yeah and also what's a nice thing about this versus a fixed board mm -hmm. is that when you set them in place if we kind of look down here assume you know that let's say we're, we're, the tire is buried up to here let's say right we're in a nice little rut when you set them they will follow the contour of the ground okay. so um, so, you know, we've also been in situations where you take your fixed board and you're trying to put it on an angle and it's yep. hitting the bottom side of the vehicle or you're putting it on an angle this way mm -hmm. because you just can't set it. Mm -hmm. This is so much easier. You just put it in front, you give it a good kick like that, one on each wheel, back in the vehicle, light on the throttle. And because it's smooth right here on the first plate, then the wheel spins and it just sucks it under. And this is the beginning transition plate, and then that's it, Bob's your uncle, you're right. Yeah. Uh, large diameter tires, this is our XL size, and this is our 70 inch long. Again, 70 inches long, that's a 35 inch tire, that's a lot of run out. There's nothing like this on the market. Vacuum mounts on the back of the, um, of the uh, iPad. Oh. Yeah, so it's nice if you want to do, um, you know, a temporary installation of your iPad in the vehicle for an okay. app because you're doing, a, you know, doing a nice big run. Right. Yeah, and then uh, our cell phone cell holder phone as well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. And then tell us a little bit about your ta tire table. So the tire table. This is the original tailgater tire table from the U.S. Okay. Uh, this is aluminum, and this is what we call the standard size. Okay. Okay. Uh, we've had it mounted up onto uh, 44s. Oh. Yeah, so this is a 35, no problem. So it just is fully adjustable. You just slip it over the tire. And in the leg, you got two ways. You can do what we call the cantilever approach. Mm -hmm. So if the ground is soft, muddy, you can do cantilever. Or in this case, we haven't had rain, it's nice and hard. <laughs> you That's can perfect. do that. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So some people like this, even on hard ground, because it's out of the way. It's out of the way. Right? So yeah. if you want to come up here with your laptop even. Mm -hmm. Right? <laughs> Perfect working hey boss, station. I'm working. I'm working. I'm busy. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm getting ready for a team's meeting. <laughs> and that's my background. You know, you can pick your backgrounds. Mine just happens to be, uh, you know, a forest. A forest. <laughs> or a beach. Or, or a beach. beach. Or... There you Okay, one more thing I'm really interested uh, in is... Yes. Are you making it? Ah, the pièce de résistance. Mm -hmm. So, let's put it into its uh, proper clean. 
So, here we go. So, everyone's seen these bags around, mm -hmm. trash room, yeah. etc. Blah blah blah. So basically, what this bag is, it's all designed around the table, the tailgater tire table. So it has its own slot pouch, if you wish, that you slide your table in. So if you got a, 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 a spare tire, the outside, a swing, yeah, and you got the table. Oh, if it's right around. Now you put this right in there. It has its own slide. And then you have the whole front part of this bag okay. for other storage. Okay. So, 100 pounds, no problem. Okay. Um, you know, you got to be aware of your, your, your tire mount mm -hmm. as to how much weight it Wait, can take. Okay. But this is basically probably 30, 40% bigger than any bag out there in the market. And it's really about rethinking this real estate. You can use buy the smaller ones for, for trash. Hmm. That's nice. You can use this, trash and beyond. You know, maybe you're going to say, no, actually, I want to put my barbecue in here. I want to put some other stuff in here. And now I actually have a lot of cargo space. I mean, you think if you got some folding chairs and this and that, it would just be a drop in the bucket of this thing. Yeah. Right? You can put your recovery in the bottom. Yep. Put your other stuff on top mm -hmm. so you have dirty on the bottom, a little bit cleaner on the top. No. It's very versatile and big. That's the thing. Big. Canadian made. Canadian made. I'm here with Luke and organizer and um, of Overlanded North. And I'm going to say for my first experience for this weekend was awesome. Um, being a Jeeper, being a Jeeper and seeing all the different, you know, vehicles and different brigs and just meeting the people, meeting the community. is definitely a different insight mm. to the off-road community. And, you know, Luke, this is your... Six. Six year uh, doing this. Event. Six, no, sixth event. Six event. Okay. Six Third, event. Year. Third, Third year. Third year. Um, what is like your most memorable moment or moment, like a memorable event that you can remember? That's, mm. you know, that's, I know there's probably a lot, yeah. but. You know, I think uh, that's a tough one, to be honest <laughs> with you, because I, I reach each event you, you, you have little moments, mm -hmm. these like micro moments that stand out to you. Mm -hmm. But I think like one of the interesting things during our winter event was welcoming 
uh, the first timer um, to our event, uh, very new to Canada from China. Andy is his name. Came with a very capable rig. Him and his lovely uh, wife, I believe. And um, they had they had done research. They had the right stuff. We were so excited. We get excited about our, our the first timers. And because um, a big part of it's about sharing knowledge. Right. And just the cultural practices of like being in the outdoors and being prepared and all that right, stuff. Right. And they call me six layer now <laughs> because I said, how many layers do you guys have on? Yeah. And they had this you know, beautiful outerwear and they said, oh, under this. And I said, yeah. And they said, one. <laughs> and I said, okay, so I'm going to get you a coat because you might be cold. Yeah. And I think like to me that stands out because we want to create an environment where everyone feels welcome mm -hmm. and that they're able to grow as it relates to their skills, their knowledge. Um, and I use the word knowledge mobilization or, or cultural practices. Mm -hmm. And it seems weird. Like we think of Canada, maybe we take it for granted how big and vast and beautiful and rugged it is. Right. But it's, I think it has a mystique. Mm -hmm. And when you get into this sort of uh, community, mm -hmm. um, that's sort of maybe what you're drawn to. Your archetype is drawn to getting out, uh, exploring, yep. um, pushing yourself, building confidence, challenging, going off the beaten path. Mm -hmm. And so when I think of, you know, that particular moment yeah. and we were able to impart some some wisdom. It was yeah. John at Beast who yeah. aptly brought a ton of really nice uh, <laughs> minus 30 coats. It was like, you can have coat, uh, which I love about John. Um, you know, I think that's cool. I think yeah. it's, we're trying to look after one another, another. and you know, that's that sense of community, right? Yeah. Like it's about, um, you know, just teaching each other. We right. learn every day and I right. think that's a memorable moment. So I right. see those now throughout the events. Throughout the so events. it's super cool. Yeah. Seeing all like the new people and seasoned overlanders and, um, yeah, and just the rigs and the gear that they have, I think is just a whole mind opening. And if you haven't come, you guys definitely need to come and just experience that in general. Um, so speaking of events, you have other events that go out throughout the year. Um, it's not the only one, Albin Hills. Talk about your other events that you have. Yeah, so our next event, uh, so we have three events in 2023. Uh, that we produced. We also partnered with um, the Sportsman Show where mm -hmm. we produced a haul uh, last, I guess it was February. Uh, so our next event's in Muskoka. It's mm -hmm. in March. It's on the Bannon Runway and that's where it sort of all started. It's mm -hmm. called the Rally. Uh, it is the, I think it's, I want to say it's September 16th to the 17th, okay. if I'm not mistaken. Okay. Don't quote me on that. <laughs> um, and um, yeah, it's really fun. It's fun in the sense that it's a different type of event where yeah. it's 3,000 feet. Wow. It's a runway. You have about 200, 225 trucks on it. Wow. And it, it reminds me, it's, this is going to sound really funny, but my I have a five-year-old. Mm -hmm. Uh, about the movie Cars and they talk about like <laughs> Radiator Springs and it used to be a really cool town and everyone would cruise on the main drag yeah, yeah. but then the highway came and then everyone didn't go to Radiator Springs yeah. so I feel it's like that cruising thing you're like yeah. you know let's go for a walk yeah and yeah. check out really cool trucks mm -hmm. cars yeah, motorcycles yeah. and then there's 14 fires okay equidistance sort of from each other along the runway and so when you're at the top of the runway and you're looking down yeah. you see these burning fires wow so it's like sort of memorable mm -hmm. and um and then it's cool it's in the heart of muskoka so mm -hmm. you know they have access to trails mm -hmm. um is is uh you know readily available mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um and then it's sort of cool too because it's a little bit further north and we try and welcome the people from say north bay or sudbury uh even you know we get a lot of folks from the ottawa valley mm -hmm. which is super cool and like overlanding is really about the journey the journey and so when I drive to these events, because I live in Ottawa and I had to drive here, I think about the route I'm going on mm -hmm. just so I can enjoy my drive. Right. And um, yeah, so that's the next event that's coming up. So it's uh, yeah in September at Deerhurst Resort. You can find out more information on our website, overlandnorth.ca. Awesome. Um, yeah, and it's, uh, it's really community focused. There's no day visitors. Okay. Uh, vendors are always there, okay. uh, but they're there to like have fun and, okay. and not work like they're, you know, say here where we're trying to grow, um, just grow the community, grow educate the community. people. And that's sort of why we're at Albion Hills because mm -hmm. we have close proximity to the GTA mm -hmm. and it's uh, sort of, again, you can draw people in an hour or two hours away mm -hmm. from north, south, east, west. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, so that's the next one. Awesome. 
And so I experienced something this weekend. I did the drives experience yeah. on Friday. Now, is that the first time you guys did it that is. This, this year? Okay. Yeah. So awesome, of, awesome experience. Uh, Rich and Chris were great. Yeah. <laughs> um, we had a great group and it was basically going through, you know, different ruts and different like um, terrain and the rock pile and um, taking as an off-roader yeah. and even still going on it. Um, I went with a whole completely open mind. I learned, I still learned this stuff. You're always sure. learning. You're yeah, always, always learning. learning. Always learning, all exploring. But um, as a person, it's a first time experience. I think it was great. I think you should continue doing it. Awesome. And Thank you. It's, yeah, I think the feedback you get was really good on, like, really good on that. The, a lot of the group they really enjoyed it. Really enjoyed it. Um, do you think that you would have it still in the future? You think yeah. You bring it back? You'll yeah, like, I think yeah. so. Um, yeah, so I'm glad to hear that feedback. Um, we got connected with Richard and Chris through uh, one of our business partners mm -hmm. at West who uh, helps us with our, with our marketing. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it was a really, it was like the universe. Sometimes yeah. things happen for, for a reason. reason. Yeah. Well, that was a reason. <laughs> yeah. um, we, I've been talking to Chris for the last oh, six months. Mm -hmm. Um, Chris is the owner of Overland Training Canada. Mm -hmm. He does a lot of this type of work mm -hmm. with mining companies. Mm -hmm. With um, He's a certified wrecker. Mm -hmm. um, so he does some really big recovery things, mm -hmm. uh, projects. And he's also he's also um, the director of drive experiences for Overland Expo okay. down in the, down in uh, the U.S. Yes. Uh, he's also affiliated with the Rebel Rally, mm -hmm. which is an amazing event if you mm -hmm. don't know or heard, heard of it. it. Yeah, heard uh, of it yeah. And it was sort of cool because uh, the person we have in common is Kelsey Pringle. She's actually been a participant mm -hmm. par participant excuse me mm -hmm. in the red battle rally mm -hmm. and um so it was just like okay i need to meet this guy right. and through those conversations we said we always beta test things mm -hmm. we we're like we're gonna start small we're gonna have high touch there mm -hmm. was what 10 12 people in your group yep. mm -hmm. you have two instructor mm -hmm. instructors um and you you get that really high touch access to them it's a three-hour experience, three hours experience yeah. so um we're definitely going to do it we're really excited to look at how it is we can expand it mm -hmm. um how it is we can um get more people interested in it and and really test their rig mm -hmm. right to, mm -hmm. you know there was there was four runners mm -hmm. going through it there mm -hmm. was uh car trucks with stock lifts yep. you know like it wasn't you know it wasn't crazy yep. um a lot of people stayed off the rock garden yep. um because I if did you, it. If you did it <laughs> nice nice did you air down i'm just sort of curious um so i did it and i thought about doing that and we had another jeep actually disconnect oh yeah uh, so you got a little you know a little flexy yeah, yeah so i was like oh i should have disconnected but i didn't air down i was low on my tire pressure so i just kept it like yeah, that yeah i just kept it like but that. you know what it it, yeah, it, it was. Out. Yeah, it worked yeah, out it worked for sure. Out. Yeah, that's it cool. Fun. It was fun. That's good. That's good to hear. Yeah. Um, what my other question was, I know we talked about it a little bit like off camera. Now the rigs itself. What do you think is the most popular, let's say, overlanding rig? Now I see mm. mostly for myself, I see a lot of Toyotas, a lot of Tacomas. Yeah. I see like we talked about the Chevrolets. They're starting to come yeah, in they're as well. Starting, yeah. Um, <laughs> A few, a, few, <laughs> a few jeeps a few jeeps um, but what do you think what do you think like is there you let her get it out <laughs> it's your friend all right there you go and blue steel <laughs> so our yeah our last question will be what is what do you think on top of your head <laughs> okay what is your most popular vehicle that comes to overland in events Oh, it's comes to our event. I would mm. say it's a Tacoma. Okay. Yeah, I'd say it's a Tacoma. Okay. Uh, Gladiator is up there though okay. as well. Um, and I would say we're starting to see more, you know, sort of Canyon Colorados. Okay. Um, and then you know, we'd like to see more of everything. To be more honest everything. with you, like it would be cool. You know, we, uh, we've seen a Porsche 944 yep. Yep. with a, you know, with a roof <laughs> basket on it. We've, uh, we've seen a uh, Subaru with yep. a 12 inch lift. Yep. Yep. You know, it's, uh, yeah, it's pretty cool, but so it's definitely changing. It's definitely evolving. Yeah, I think see, so. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And I think we would love to see, um, more two wheel, mm. um, sort of setups too. Okay. Uh, you know, it'd be a two wheel or four wheel, you know, yeah. it's, it's about you know, getting out there and exploring yep. and, and the two, I'm a, I'm a motorcycle enthusiast. And I think the fun part about being on two wheels is mm. you can get a little deeper and a little mm. further in mm -hmm. and a little closer to some, some, some lakes stuff. and mm -hmm. stuff that, you know, the four wheels just can't, can't get, get into. Right. I so, agree. I yeah. Agree. 
And last question, I guess, is where can everyone reach you or find you, find about events, your social media? Yeah, so um, you can reach us online, uh, overlandnorth.ca, mm -hmm. and then at Overland North, mm -hmm. uh, North and TH, okay. uh, on both uh, Facebook and Instagram. Perfect. Thank yeah. you. Thank, Thank you. you.